Hello, this is Noah Code. I'm going to show how to secure an API gateway with either um, API with either a Cognito user or an API token. So you're going to use a Cognito user authentication for APIs that you call from like a web UI or someplace where the credential may be um, exposed and so that it's unique to a particular user at a particular time, such as a user logged into your UI. Um, but you can use an API token for APIs called from a server or an app where the API token can be secretly secured, such as um, if you have one backend server calling your API gateway, you can use the API token. Since API token is a little quicker and easier to set up, I'll show that first, and then we'll show the Cognito user. So I've got a simple, a we're going to go to the AWS Management Console, and I've got a simple AWS API exposed via gateway. It's backed by a Lambda right here. It's essentially got um, three endpoints, the root, a slash city, city, and an A and V. Uh, we can look at, we can go ahead and call that API and confirm that it's not currently secured by anything. So here's the API base endpoint URL. Uh, let's actually clear this. Okay, I like to use this little utility called HTTP. It's like a modern version of curl, specifically for web API work. And you can install it with a brew install HTTP IE. It's called HTTP IE. You can look it up. But we're going to call that. So here's the base URL. And it's just going to return a JSON object that says hello world. And you can see it's not secured. And then the other endpoints are ENV for some environment information within this Lambda. And we have cities like Seattle that just maps the city to the state that it's in. And there we go. So those are three endpoints, and you can see they're all currently not secured. So I'll just copy this so we can use that later. All right, so our three endpoints, a root, ENV, and cities. So let's secure this ENV one, assuming, for example, that that endpoint is always going to be called from another server and not a user. So we can go down to our, so we can come here into our resources. And we can say, select this env endpoint. And we're going to go into the get method execution. And we're going to say that, uh, go into the method request. And we're going to say that an API key is required. So we're going to say that is true. We'll go ahead and deploy this stage and say that an API is required. So while that's deployed, and then if we go back and try to hit that URL, uh, that was env, we can see. Right now, so far, it hasn't fully deployed because we can still call it successfully. Ah, but now it is deployed, and we can see the beginning forbidden message is now protected. So we can set up an API key that's allowed to call that API. We come down here to the usage plans, which associates an API key with an endpoint. So we'll go create a usage plan. We'll call this API demo. And we're not, no throttling. We can just call it as much as we want, or quota. We can call as much as we want. And then we're going to say that the that usage plan applies to our Hello World API. And we're going to be able to say, OK, we're going to add that. And then we're going to create a new API key to add to that usage plan. We'll call it API Demo. We'll have it auto-generate that. And there we go. Now to associate that API key. And so now that, that API key is allowed to call the endpoint, and we can go into the API key, which is also down here under API keys, and see what the key is. So we'll copy that and we'll save this. API key. There we go. And now, again, if we try to call this without the API key, we'll just confirm it should be still secured. OK, good. So to call it, we add to the a header called x-api key. And then we put that key in there. And now we're allowed to call it. So that's all there is to it. Adding an API key, adding a usage plan, and telling that endpoint that an API key is required. So um, this is just uh, this is HTTP utility. That's how we can add a header. It's that easy. Um, of course, if you're using um, curl or Postman, you'd add the header however else you do that. Okay. So we'll go ahead and save this. I like to save my commands that I've used. 
and that's using an API key. Okay, now in some cases you want to secure an API with a cognito user so that a uh, user has to log in. So let's do that. Okay, so we're going to go into um, cognito. So pull that up in a new tab. We'll go to manage user pools. So user pool is like a list of users. So we're going to create a new user pool. We'll call this API demo. We'll just review some of the defaults. It says an email address is required, password length. I'm just going to change this so that a special character is not required for a password. just makes it a little easier for the purposes of this demo. And that's all fine. So we'll go ahead and create that user pool. And we'll need this user pool ID in a little bit. So I'll save this right here. User pool ID. And we'll go ahead and add a user. So we'll call this um, Billy Bob, the username, and um, call it username. We'll just call it Billy for make it easy. Okay. No invitation. We'll create a temporary password. I have this handy little password creator. So we'll say password is right there. And it requires a phone number. So we'll just put that in for now. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Say it's already verified, and for an email address, we'll just say it's oh, Billy at Bob.com. Okay. Great. So when we created this new user, we won't save that. It comes in an account status. It's a password change requ is required because that password that we create is a temporary password. So we'll go ahead and force the password change, and we do that through the AWS uh, command line interface. And the command I need right here is we're going to authorize, we're going to, as an admin, we're going to initiate an authorization um, through the command line. So AWS command line and our user pool, copy this. So we're going to say this is our user pool. Oh, client ID. We need a client ID. So a client is something that's allowed to interact with the user pool. So we go down here to app clients, and we're going to add an app client. We'll call this, uh, let's say, API demo again, or we could call it console. Um, let's just do that. We'll say console because we're going to call from the console. We do not want to use a client, generate a client secret. We'll just take that off. But we do want an admin to be able to authenticate with it, and we'll want a user to be able to authenticate with it. So we'll create that app client, and here's our app client ID. And this will allow us to interact with that user pool. So uh, the app client ID is that. We're going to say the authorization flows that we're going to use is an admin. It could be OAuth2, it could be username and password. And then the authentication parameters, we're going to use our username, which is Billy, and our password, which is that. Okay. So I'll run that on the command line. And that's great. So change status. And so there's a new challenge. It says a new password is required. And they provided some session information, a session ID to or token. Great, so we want to now change that password. We'll do that with this other command called AWS Cognito Identity Pool Admin Respond to Auth Challenge. Again, we're going to have to provide our user pool, which is not that one from a previous attempt, and our client ID. And then the challenge name, we're going to give it a new password required. And the response is uh, this new password. So we'll create a new password. And I'll say new password what is that. Um, okay. And then username is Billy. And then we need that session token from our previous authorization. So we'll copy that session token, put that in there. And we'll call that. All right, and we got an error. It says invalid password. Uh, password does not conform to policy. And password must have numeric characters. Cool. So it's telling us that our password we had did not have a number in it. So I add a number to it. There, it's a new password. And we'll provide a new password right here. And we'll call that again. Great. It says we officially authenticated. Um, now it's given us an access token, refresh token, an ID token. 
And if we need to refresh our tokens, we use that refresh. But for our purposes, we're going to use this ID token. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Now we have a, a user, we have a Cognito pool set up, and we have an ID token. All right, let's go secure our API with that. So we'll go back to API Gateway. We'll go back to our API, Hello World. And we'll go back to our resource. And this time, let's secure this city's call. So we'll go into the method request. We'll set the authorizer. Uh, notice there's there isn't there's only AWS IAM right now, so we need to add an authorizer. We'll create a new authorizer, and we'll call this Cognito. And we're going to say instead of it could come from a Lambda, but we're going to use Cognito. Here's that little user pool we created. And then this says, where do you want, um, which header field is going to contain your token? And for the sake of what we're doing, we're going to call it authorizer. Um, author well, we'll call it authorization. I'll just confirm that's what I want to use. Yeah. So the authorization header is going to contain the token. Great. So now we have our authorizer. We can go back here to resources. Um, come back here to get method request, authorization. Notice it doesn't show up yet, so let's go ahead and refresh that page. All right, go back in here, authorization. There we go, now we have Cognito user pool authorizers. Cognito pool, good. In this case, we're just gonna use Cognito, we're not gonna use that separate API key. We're gonna use a Cognito ID token. All right, so we'll go, have to go ahead and deploy this and let me get I'm going to do the same thing I want to show that it it's currently not secured and after deploying it will be secured so here it's currently not secured okay you can call it and we'll deploy the API and it's getting deployed and shortly it should no longer see now we're not authorized to access that API again great so we need to provide the user token so the way we do that is we call the API again, but we provide that header. We called it, what do we call it? Um, the header we use was called authorization. Yeah, that's right. So call authorization, header, and then we need to provide the Cognito ID token. So we'll go back to the console. There's the ID token right there. So we'll just copy that, paste it in and now call the API with that. And there we go, now we can call the API with our Cognito user. So you can imagine if you had another user that logged in, you get that ID token from that user logging in, and then you can call the API with that user ID token. And we're gonna do it again. Uh, one other thing, uh, we did the authorization using an admin response to challenge, but you can also just authenticate as a normal user. Here's the command for that. So we can do AWS Cognitive ID Identity Pool initiate authorization, but it's a user password authorization. So we can pass a username and password. So in this case, let's say Billy, and then Billy's new password. And the client ID has to match. There you go. So you can imagine a REST call from your web UI that does this as opposed to the console, but we're gonna do it on the console or if you're using like the Boda library. There we go, now we got the ID token again. So again, we can call that API, and this time um, we're gonna use authori authorization and provide the new token. And now we're able to call it with the new token. And that's it. Thanks for watching.